The latest version of the robotic system brings in not just the ability to make perfect bone cuts, which they've all done for many years. And we saw that on the first uh, iteration of the robots, they, they were able to do that. But now the Omni system can come in and measure the ligament tension of the medial and the lateral side or the two sides. And then we can factor that in and balance that to give us a, a precise custom fit to your knee. The robotic system allows us to be more accurate on our cuts. It allows us to basically do a virtual surgery up on the computer screen before we make any cuts on the patient. That leads to a less invasive surgery, something that makes more accurate cuts and balance the ligaments. I'm finding that that leads to a quicker recovery, to a more customized knee for each patient, and to a sense of balance and a more natural feel within somebody's knee. I think that this next generation of the robotic system is kind of what I've been waiting for and, and uh, has made finally a big difference clinically in terms of rate of recovery, sense of stability, natural feel to the knee. So we've tried to set up the rest of this website to give you as much information as possible. There have been a lot of questions about this robotic knee, so actually this video will continue on and give you more details about that. But go through the rest of the website. Go down to the knee section. You'll see videos on everything from preparing for a knee replacement, what are your options during surgery, what exercise can you do ahead of time, what are your options after surgery in terms of patient care, and what exercises do you do after. What exercise can you do once you complete physical therapy? They're all in a series of videos right there under that knee section. We'll also go through some of the meniscal pathology we see in ACL reconstructions. Go to the shoulder section, and there you'll see shoulder replacements. What is a reverse shoulder replacement? What's a superior capsule reconstruction? How do we repair rotator cuffs? That will all be in there. So this video will go on, uh, a little bit more of an explanation on the robotic knee with the saw bones and a couple quick uh, surgical views to show how that uh, interacts and what we do with the robot in surgery. Well, we've gone through the basic premise of these knee replacements, where we're not just cutting here and here and replacing the whole knee, we're really just resurfacing, okay? We've talked about how that becomes the new top of the shin bone, and this becomes the femoral component, which is just, again, just a resurfacing of that. Now again, the advantage of this new omnibotic robotic system is we're going to get in and you'll see how we're going to measure the ligament tension that that patient may have adapted either way as they've worn out and then we're going to incorporate that as we virtually plan all our cuts and we virtually plan exactly how this knee is going to fit before we start doing anything. We'll go through how we do this. So again, traditionally, we've just used things outside of the bone. We've used a rod up the inside of the bone to try and get these alignments. With the computer and with the robot, we don't have to do that. So it's a little bit less invasive and a little bit more accurate because we're going right off the bony anatomy. Okay. When we're doing the uh, robotic knee, our approach is going to be the same. We're going to make a midline incision. We're going to move the kneecap out of the way and we're going to clear some of the tissues in the front. Then the difference is, the robot's got to know exactly the alignment of the bone. So we're going to drill two pins into the shin bone, and those are just through tiny little stab incisions right here. Okay, so it really doesn't add much. The two pins that we're going to put into the femur just come through the original incision right here. Scott, don't mess up, my <laughs> Fine, take a picture of Scott. He just wants me to be fine. fine take okay, a picture. now it will work. Take a picture. No, no. So once we put the two pins in, then we're going to come up with a way for the computer to align that. So we're going to screw those on real fast. And we're going to bring on this tibial one right here. So it's important we get these screwed down tight as this is how the computer will measure within half a millimeter of how we're going to change the alignment of this knee. All right. So that will be our basic lineup once we get those in. These little balls right here are going to communicate with the computer. It's accurate enough that it can just tell the difference of where everything sits. And so we train the computer for exactly where everything is. The first thing we do once we get that all aligned is we make sure the computer can read that and it can see those pins everywhere. Then we're going to show where the center of the hip is, where the ankle is, and where the position of all the bones are in the middle. So I'm now using this electric pencil to calibrate these tracker balls to communicate accurately with the sensors. So 
This is uh, the actual tensioning device of the robot. It uses these little paddles right here. One you'll see later, we put it between the bones, we activate it, and it'll push up with whatever predetermined amount of newtons I tell it to do. It'll measure the gaps, and so it tells me how tight are the ligaments on each side. So if we watch these as we calibrate, we're gonna get a little motion going here. I guess that was it. Once calibrated, we're going to move straight to moving the leg around so that the computer learns where the center of rotation is for the hip. Then we're going to tell the computer exactly where the landmarks are in space. Where is the bone? And we can learn it, or we can teach it. We can learn it. We can teach it just by using this pointer on our various points of access down here. So we're going to come down to the ankle. And we're going to get both sides here. We then move up to the knee joint. We trace out the condyles, the epicondyles, the anterior cortex. All of this allows us to get these accurate measurements to the computer without the need for a CT or MRI scan. This will then bring it up on the screen, allow us to manipulate it and create the knee replacement before we actually do it. So you can see that the computer then marks all those little points of data and it records it. That is how it recorded the end of the thigh bone or the femur. As I take the knee through a range of motion, you can see how it's taking the pre-op alignment. Now the pre-op alignment is perfect here because this knee is designed perfectly. Usually we've got a little bit of varus, so it's going to sit like this and we're going to have kind of a bow-legged appearance, okay? If somebody is a little bit knock-kneed, then they're going to be the other way. We're going to have an alignment over here like this. So the computer can record all that in as I'm taking it through motion, and it's recording that. That will then uh, give us the information to manipulate and decide how we're going to make our cuts. The first thing we'll do is decide how we're going to make our tibial cut. We'll make that typically perpendicular to the axis of the bone. You see that white line? Uh, we dial that in and we decide where we're going to cut. As we pin the cutting jig in place, we then perfect it. You see the little yellow, purple, and uh, blue circles down there. We're turning those screws until we get that line green. That tells us we're right on. Then we make that cut exactly where we plan to do it. Then the Omnibotic system allows us to put a sensor on there and confirm that that cut is exactly what we wanted. We can see that green line reproduced. We then bring in our tensioning device now that we've made that tibial cut. We're going to place that between the bones and we're going to measure the ligament tension. The medial side versus the lateral side. That's going to help us balance that knee. So now we'll take it from flexion out into extension. Let the computer measure those gaps. As we look up on that screen, <laughs> these pre-cut little things are moving for us. But there, so you can see I can move it. I can see how many newtons of force it takes to get an extra millimeter of gap. And we're just giving the computer the information. Perfect. So we can see here we have a 14, here we have a 13. We can tell, we can get all our readings as to how we're moving. So now with the information we just gathered, we can measure our gap here in extension when the leg is straight and our gap in flexion when the leg is bent to 90 degrees. From here we can see the gaps that we have, so we're 14 and 12, 13 and 13. Um, we can see how we ran through varus valgus, and then we can see what we're dialing in. We can choose the size of our femoral component. We can choose how much flexion or extension we want to put that in. We can choose the amount of external rotation we dial in based off our epicondylar axis. Okay, and it gives us a lot of data. And here's where we virtually go ahead and design this whole surgery with all the information that we've gathered of both the shape of the bones and now the tightness of the ligaments. Okay, so we're factoring all that in as we go ahead in this step and design the knee for this particular patient. So now this is the real robotic portion, okay? This is where we're gonna put this into the femoral trackers that we've already calibrated. They're fixed to the patient's bone. We secure this down. This is going to make all of our femoral cuts, or at least put our guides exactly where we want them so we can do that. We then calibrate this machine. We make sure it's communicating exact with the computer. We dial it in, boom, then we're ready to go. It is going to move and put the cutting guides right where we need them to be. 
The robot's going to take over and make sure that it has adequate space and room to get to all the cuts that we've pre-planned. You can see that what it does is really move the saw capture to make the front cut, then the distal cut, and we saw within that saw capture what we've pre-planned. Good. So we would go ahead and make a cut here right through that saw capture. We would slide it down so it's really close to the bone, make our cuts, and then move it up before we moved it to the next spot. We'd go ahead and make that distal cut and then we'd bring in our validator and we'd go ahead and make sure the computer liked that cut. Okay, then we'd go ahead and make our front cut here, or what we call our anterior cut on the femur, straight across there. We'd bring back in our validator and we'd say, is that creating exactly what we planned? Do we need to correct it? Do we need to make any modifications? Then it moves to our next cut, and from there we can go ahead and make our posterior cut on our femur. Good. Okay. Go ahead and move it. Now it moves. Again, we slide that in really close. We make our chamfer cut right here, removing just enough bone per our preoperative planning to remove just the crummy cartilage. We move it out of the way again. It rotates down, we slide that down, we then make our last cut right there. Then we're done with all the femoral cuts. It's made all of our cuts for us exactly like we planned in the preoperative session there. Then we're going to go ahead and remove this robot. And then at this point we're going to put on our trial femoral component. Okay, so now we're going to put the tension measuring device back in there. We've put on some little uh, paddles to imitate the actual tibial component. We've put in our femoral trial, and now we can retrial and say, did we recreate what we thought we were going to create? Okay, go ahead and tension those. So now you can see that coming up and tensioning. We're going to read that on the computer screen. So now we can watch on the computer screen as we take that through and see where we're sitting. From that we can go ahead and make adjustments if we feel we need to release any ligament to balance it. We've got to make sure all our cuts are okay because this is how it's going to sit in our final view. So it lets us see all that before we put in our final components. Now this is what it would look like when we've put the actual final components in. We wouldn't have cemented them in yet, but we put in our trial, our tibial tray, the polyethylene, and the femoral component. And again, then we're going to run it through that motion, we're going to look on the computer screen, and we're going to see is that accomplishing just what we wanted to do. Okay? Are our gaps balanced? Is that knee happy? Do we have just a little bit of play, but not too much? All right, so that was kind of the nuts and bolts of how we use this robotic arm or this system to come in and help us out. We've got the sensors up here, and we've got the main computer, and it just talks to these different pointers and sensors through that whole process. So once again, just to review, I think the advantage of this navigation robotic system is that it not only measures the morphology of the shape of the bone, like many systems have done before it, it also takes into account the tension of these ligaments. So it lets us virtually design all of these cuts and all of the fit and fill of this system that we want to use before we even start cutting. So it makes it less invasive in that sense, it makes it much more accurate, and I think it recreates what we want the patient's knee to move like much better than, than we did beforehand. So now you've seen the robotic knee, you see how it works, you see how we use it, you see why I'm excited about it. Come into the office, let's get some x-rays on your knee, let's see what you've done before and see if that is a, uh, an option for you or whether there's something else that can be done to ease your pain.